Hey, what's up everyone? Lee Lowell here from smartoptionsell.com. How's everyone doing today? It is Saturday, January 21st, 2023. We're back for another edition of our free YouTube option strategy videos. We're going to we're going to carry on with the the put selling uh, tutorials that we started last week for 2023, our bread and butter, which is selling options, mainly selling put options. So I'm making these uh, new new videos, uh, sprucing them up, uh, getting them refreshed for 2023. Not a lot of new information because the strategy really doesn't change. But you know, I like to I like to make these new videos. So we're we're moving on here. We're selling put options. If you didn't see our video from last week, please go back into our YouTube channel here and look for the video from last week. I'll actually put it on at the end of this video. You'll see uh, it'll pop up on the screen there. So you can just click on it and watch last week's video if you didn't catch it. So we're talking about selling put options. And in this week's video, as we do, I like to give you these this free information, uh, use some of my 30 plus years in this business. Uh, we're gonna be talking about what kind of account to uh, sell these put options in. Should you be using a cash account or a margin account when selling put options? What's better? What's the difference between the two? So we're going to talk about that for a little bit. But before we do that, as you know, at the smartoptionseller.com, we're all about selling options. We're all about selling put options. That is our bread and butter. So please do yourself a favor. Go to our website, smartoptionseller.com, and get a free copy of our Put Selling Basics ebook right here, this thing right here, right in front of you. Go to our website, click on the Put Selling Basics header at the top, scroll down, you can read a little bit more about the, the description, and then put your name and email address in here. We will send you an email that contains a link for the free copy of Put Selling Basics. It's all about why we love selling put options, what makes it such a great strategy, and why I've been doing it for 30 plus years with a lot of success. So do yourself a favor, get that. And and once you're done doing that, look at some of our services here. We got our Smart Option Seller newsletter, our Vertical Spread Trader newsletter. These are our paid newsletters that we have. And then we, are, we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need a little help getting to that next level of your options trading skills. All right, so let's go on back to our lesson for the day. And in this PDF here, I have the cash account or margin account for selling put options. What is the difference? Why would you want to use one over the other? other so let's discuss each one so if you remember or if you know or if you're just new put selling is all about selling a put option contract to the other party which is the put option buyer and when you sell a put option contract you're actually doing two things number one you're getting cash right up front for the sale of that contract and number two you're actually obligating yourself to potentially buy a stock of your choosing at a price of your choosing sometime in the future so as i mentioned last week in, in last week's video if there's a stock out there that you that you would like to buy but not at its current price you want to try to buy the stock at a cheaper price because you want to get a better deal on, on that stock you can sell a put option using a strike price at a level where you would be comfortable potentially buying that stock. So the example we gave, you know, the stock's at, um, you know, $100 a share, and you don't want to buy it at its current $100 share price. You can sell a put option contract that say the $70 strike, which means you're obligating yourself to potentially buy that stock at $70, not 100, but at $70, if and only if the stock actually falls from 100 to 70 within the expiration period. So you're giving yourself $30 of buffer right there to potentially buy that stock. You may not end up buying the stock because the stock has to fall that far within the expiration period for you to buy that stock. But in the meantime, in the meantime, while you're waiting for that stock to potentially fall $30, someone is paying you for your time and effort. That's what happens when you sell an option. Someone pays you money for that option. Basically what you're doing is selling insurance to somebody on their holdings. So if they had bought the stock at 100 and they want to get out of that stock by selling it at 70, you're going to be there to, to take that stock from them, to buy that stock from them. That, that would be called, you would be getting put the stock at $70. That, and, and the process is called getting assigned. All right. So when you sell a put option, you're on the hook to potentially buy the stock. And I say potentially because there's no guarantee it'll happen. But what is guaranteed is that you will always get the premium the money that the option buyer has to pay you 
you will get that. And so that's a, an income stream that you can have over time. If you sell these put options with a lot of cushion in between these strike prices, you can just continuously make this money without ever having to buy the stock. So that's one way that people, you know, create an income stream for yourself. But if in fact you really do want to buy the stock, well then, you know, you hope that the, the, the stock price falls and then you'll get to buy the stock. But in order to make those transactions, you have to do it in, in an options account, an options trading account. And you do that with your broker. Now a broker offers two kinds of accounts, a cash account and a margin account. And the difference is, and right here, just kind of scrolling along, looking through uh, what I've wrote here, a cash account, which is also called selling cash secured puts, means that you will have the, the full cash on hand at all times, if and when you have to buy those shares of stock. So let's look at our example here. If you sold a 50 strike put option and, and in the end at expiration, the stock actually falls down to $50 from wherever it may start from, you, you'll have to buy the stock and that outlay would be $5,000 of cash. You know, you got to buy each option contract is worth 100 shares of stock. So if you sold one put option contract, you're on the hook to buy hundred shares of that stock. Now, if the strike price is 50 right here, you're on the hook to potentially lay out $5,000 at expiration if you're called upon to fulfill the contract. Now, when you make the trade, you know, months prior, if the stock's at say 70 or $80 at that time, you're still required to have $5,000 of free cash that's going to be held aside by your broker at all times while the trade is active. Whether you end up buying the stock or not, you don't know that until expiration time. You're still going to have to have on hold, off limits to you, $5,000. That's called a cash secured put, meaning you're going to have that $5,000 of cash on hold, ready to go at all times. Now, is that the best way to use your money? You don't know if you're ever going to buy the stock at $50, but your broker in a cash, a, in a cash account is going to require you to always have that $5,000 of cash on hold. Now, let's just say you have a $10,000 account and all of a sudden you have to have $5,000 of cash held aside. Now you've used up 50% of your, your account value just for the potential to, to maybe buy these shares at $50. You don't know if it's going to happen until expiration. So that's the one way, that's the first type of account, a cash account. Now in the, in the U S in the United States, retirement accounts have to be cash secured puts. If you're going to sell puts in, in, a, in a retirement account, you have to hold 100% of that cash at all times. That's just the rules in the U S I don't know how it is outside the U S but here in the U S if you're, if you're selling puts in a retirement account, it, it will be a cash account. So you will have to hold those that full cash 100% of that cash value on hold at all times. Now, if you're doing it in, in, in a non retirement account, then you can choose either the cash account or the, the margin account. So let's move on to the margin account. Now, if you sell these put options in a margin account, you don't have to have the full 100% of the money on hold at all times, it's only going to be a fraction of that amount. And and most of the mainstream options brokers here in the US will only have I'm going to scroll down here a little bit the margin it's called the margin requirement in a margin account the margin requirement is the amount of cash that you're going to hold aside and most mainstream mainstream brokers in the US hold roughly 10% to 20% of that full $5000 okay um, as the margin requirement so roughly you were talking $500 to $1,000 of your free cash balance will be held aside if you're using a margin account. That's 10% to 20% of that 5,000. You multiply 10% or 20% by 5,000 and you'll get your 500 to $1,000 of cash that needs to be held aside uh, minimum at all times while the trade is active. So you're, in my opinion, you're using your cash um, more efficiently in a margin account. I'm not going to, I'm not here to tell you which kind of account to choose. That's up to you to decide. But what I'm telling you is that if you have a smaller account, say $10,000 and you only have to hold 
five hundred to a thousand dollars aside, you know, you still have you know nine thousand dollars that you can play with versus the the cash secured. You're using fifty percent of your funds in a cash uh, account when you're selling put options. All right, so that's really the difference on uh, a cash secured or a margin uh, account. Now, in the margin account. The amount of money that's held aside is what's called the margin requirement. So just a term that you might need to know. So let's look at a, you know, like a real life example here and see what happens when you sell a put, how much money you'll get and what the margin requirement may be at your broker. You may have to call them and ask them or chat with them online and say, Hey, what's the margin requirement when I sell put options, if I have a margin account. So we used uh, AMD as our stock last week when we were doing the put selling example. And I'm going to I'm going to go along with AMD again. So I have this pulled up. This is Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is an options broker, very mainstream, very popular around the world. I use them personally. So this is the, the one of the screens that comes up when I want to look at options trading and, and, and how and how much options are paying when I sell put options. So we got AMD here and we're looking at the April 2023, April 21st, 2023 expiration period that expires in 90 days. And we're going to use the, you know, the 50 strike put because we've been talking about the 50 strike put in the example here. And when, if, and when you want to sell, uh, AMD puts or whatever puts, this is not a recommendation. I just want to make sure this, this is just example only. Um, so AMD finished Friday, yesterday, uh, January 20th at $70 and 10 cents. So we're looking at the 50 puts. Now, again, if, if you watch last week's video, you know, I have that 20% buffer rule, which you take 20% of the, the stock price, and then you can choose your, your, um, strike price. So that would be about 56, $56. So we're using the 50 strike, which, which meets and exceeds that that buffer that I usually choose when I'm selling put options. So we're using the 50 puts as our example, and we want to sell this put option. Okay. We want to potentially try to buy AMD shares at $50 a share right now. They're at 70. So we have, you know, $20 that AMD would have to drop by April expiration in order for us to have to follow through and, and, you know, make good on the contract and buy the hundred shares. So we don't know whether AMD is going to fall to 50 in that time period, but we're taking that, we're taking that risk. We're, we're stepping up to the plate and say, you know what, I'm good with potentially buying AMD at 50. So I want to sell this 50 put. So for the April expiration, it's it went out 77 cent bid at 80 cent offer. So we're going to just try to sell this thing at 77 cents and see if we can get filled. Now in order, when, if you, if you use interactive brokers or not, in order to invoke a trade, we sell or we click on, I should say the 77 bid, you can just click on it and it's going to bring up an order line to, uh, make the trade. So in this case here, this is where the order comes up. Okay. We're going to sell a, a AMD 50 put right here. And we want to put in a price. We're going to put in 77 cents. That's how you invoke the trade if you're if you're using uh, interactive brokers, and it's probably very similar with any other broker that you use. If you want to sell an option, you click on the bid price, and you can always change the the price that you're looking to get. In this case, we're going to go right to the bid price and sell it at 77. Now, in order for you to understand, you know what your margin requirement may be. If you're using a margin account, you can easily tell what the margin requirement is ahead of time before you actually put the trade through. Now we're going to click transmit here. It's going to bring up another window. This is the, this is the window that shows you all the details about the trade. Okay. This is the AMD April 50 put, and we're going to sell it one contract right here. And what's going to happen is, is that we're going to get $77 once the trade executes. And here's where your, your potential commission costs right here, 61 cents to a dollar 54. That will depend on, you know, the exchange, the option exchange that your order gets routed to and whether you're actually, you know, making a better, uh, price in the market. If you're, if you're, if you're tightening up the spread, or if you're just taking out the bid, then your, your commission is usually a little bit higher, but that's what's going to happen once you sell the trade here is what where you really need to pay attention to this is will this is where it's going to tell you what your margin requirement will actually be once you make the trade in an interactive brokers now this is a paper trading account this is a fake account 
Um, anyone, most brokers today have a simulated accounts. So they usually start you with a million dollars, which is very nice. But in this case, here is the, your account value before you make the trade, a million 47,655. After the trade, you're going to get roughly $75 into your account. So you'll see that your account balance actually goes up roughly $75 post trade. Okay. So you're going to sell it for $77. You're going to get a net of 75. So your account value increases by $75 down here. These next two numbers is what the initial margin will be. The initial margin is what the margin requirement will be. As soon as you sell the trade, as soon as you sell that option, this is how much money is going to be held aside as the margin requirement in your account. You can see it's $702. Okay. That's your initial margin requirement, $702. Now, if we take that and let's just see what the percentage is. Remember the maximum is $5,000 that you have to, to kick out. But right now your broker is only requiring $702. So 702, I have my calculator here divided by 5,000 is 14%. So that margin requirement is right smack in the middle of that 10 to 20% that I was mentioning. $702 of your free balance is going to be held aside as the margin requirement. That's 14%. Now down here, the maintenance margin, $586 is a little more than 10%. That, that means that this is the minimum amount of money that will be held aside regardless of what happens with the trade. Now the margin requirement can fluctuate over time based on where the this price of AMD moves to. Now, if AMD starts ticking lower over time while you're in the trade from 70, you know, to 65 to 60, and it looks like, Hey, you know, you may have to end up buying these hundred shares of stock at expiration and kick out the $5,000. So what the broker is going to do is the, the margin requirement is going to increase on you right now. It's $702. So if AMD starts dropping down in price, and it looks like it, it's, it's more likely that you may have to buy the stock. The margin re requirement will increase from 702 to maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars. The more that AMD falls, the, the higher the margin requirement will go up because your broker needs to know that you're good for, or you have the funds to potentially buy those 100 shares. So as if the stock drops, the margin requirement will go up. Now, if the stock goes up higher, it, the margin requirement could fall, but will never fall below this $586. The, the broker needs to know that you have some skin in the game because they need to know that you're there to potentially, you know, buy the, the, the hundred shares at $50 a share in the end, but they're not going to require you to keep that $5,000. Here's the, here's what you'll get right at the outset of the trade. Okay. So that's where you find out how much your margin requirement will be, uh, if you have a margin account. Okay. So we're not going to put this trade through, we're going to cancel. So all you have to do is if you want to know what the, um, we're going to get rid of this one. If you want to see the margin requirement, just, you know, click on a trade, see the, that, that account box and it'll tell you. All right. So that's really about it. Let's go back to our, um, where's my, uh, here's my PDF right here. So that's really much, much, that's really about it on how to use a either cash or margin account. Now, some people, I want to say that let's move myself out here a little bit. Some people like to use a cash secured put. Why? Because they always, or I should say a cash account, because they always want to know how much money in the end they're going to have to pay out if they're assigned on their put options. Now, let's just say you sell lots of put options on lots of different stocks, lots of different strike prices. And all of a sudden, you know, the market craps out and all the stocks drop at the same time. And it looks like you're going to have to follow through and buy all these shares of stock at the same time. How much money will you need to potentially buy all those shares of stock? So some people would rather use a cash secured type of account, knowing that they'll always know at all times how much of their account value is going to be used to buy all these stocks at the same time. Now, if you're, if you're, if you're selling lots of put options in a, in a margin account, you, and everything, you know, drops at the same time, let's say like right during COVID, 
you're going to be on the hook to potentially buy all these shares of stock and you and your account may not have all the cash necessary to pay for all these shares of stock so it's something you need to be careful about and it, you know if that happens to you in a margin account what you'll get is the margin call from your broker a margin call is basically you'll get an email or maybe you'll get a phone call from your broker saying hey look at you know all it looks like your stocks you may have to buy all these stocks you don't have enough cash in your account we're going to need you to either deposit more funds into your account or we're going to start liquidating some of your other positions that you may not want liquidated so just here's the warning is you know be careful know what you're playing with know what strike price you're using know how many contracts you're selling if you sell five contracts that's 500 potential shares if you tell one contract one option contract that's only 100 shares of stock so you know stay in your comfort zone know how much you're playing with and know how much your account could handle if you have to buy all these shares at the same time all right so that's really about it lesson for today margin or cash account you decide it's up to you also though down here last line right here you must be approved for a margin account with your broker so it, it's it they will ask you if you're just opening an account for a first time they will ask you do you want a cash account or margin account and you can you know click on the margin account but they still have to approve you what's their approval process that's that depends on the broker they may have they may see how much money you have they may ask you questions like how long have you been trading options for do you understand the risks so it all depends on how you answer the questions now, if you're not approved then you're going to just have a cash account and then you'll have to have the you know the 100 percent held aside at all times so you have to figure out how to open a margin account if that's what you want all right so that's all for today what you're going to see at the end here is you're going to see last week's video pop up about selling put options uh, for 2023 our method uh, once again don't forget to go to our website you know sign up for the free put selling basics ebook and um, you know that's it for today uh, leave me a comment if you wish give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to this channel send me an email I always answer I love to hear from you guys and I hope this has been has given you some good value all right that's all for me today, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.